It's automated AI and automation for non-techies. It's Robin here. And today I want to show you a neat little thing, a neat little uh, upgrade to a video we did recently. In fact, it was this video here, building your own voice activated AI WhatsApp assistance. We're building on top of this flow. And what are we doing? Well, you know, when you, uh, when you go ahead and you, uh, send a message to someone and then you're waiting eagerly for their reply to come back. When they're busy typing on WhatsApp, you see this little emoji right here, this little typing animation, these three bouncing dots. And I wanted to be able to trigger that so that when my AI agent is at work, the person who's waiting for that reply to come back from the AI agent can see these little dots jumping around right here in the WhatsApp to indicate that the message has been received and it's busy being processed. And thank you to Chris over in our community. Chris uh, Mirbach, Chris uh, shared this in our community. By the way, if you want to jump into our community and get fantastic tips like this, details in the description down below. But Chris shared with us the documentation that had proved to be a little bit elusive. And uh, using that documentation, we've been able to get this working. So today I want to share with you how we can upgrade the workflow that we built in the previous video and add this feature in. It's pretty straightforward. If you want to get this working, work through with me today. I'm going to show you exactly exactly how to do it. But let's jump in and look at the workflow. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a, a, a WhatsApp voice agent assistant. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this workflow. If you want to know how to build out this workflow, then um, jump into this video here, WhatsApp um, voice AI assistant on our channel, work through that. If you want details on how to get your WhatsApp N8N credentials working, jump into this video over here where we walk you through how to do that as well. So these are two videos you probably want to get familiar with before you jump in with where we are now, obviously depending on your skill level. If you're pretty advanced, you might be able to jump straight in here. But the good news is actually building out this little typing animation is not too difficult. So what was happening here in this particular workflow? Let me walk you through it quickly, give you some context, and then we can add in this animation. So here we have a trigger right here. This could either be a voice trigger or a text trigger. It would come in, we would quickly check the input type because when we send WhatsApp messages, of course, we get different types of messages. We don't just get the voice or the text coming in. We also get all kinds of kind of uh, admin messages too. So we just wanted to react to the actual voice messages. We checked whether it was a voice or a text. If it was a voice, we process the voice. If it was a text, we process the text. We pass them both to the same AI agent. The AI agent had a couple of tools to call on. You could build whatever tool you like and add it in here. And then the response would be sent back into WhatsApp. That's what's happening here. Now, what I had built previously is I had a feature coming out of here where I was moving this around into this little section up, the, up here at the top. And what this was for was some kind of feedback. I did that stage when I built this workflow, I didn't know how to do the typing animation. So I built this section in here, had a little if no to check uh, if the message coming in, if it was actually a message and not one of those little WhatsApp admin messages. If it was actually a message, I used a little code note to generate a random reply and I'd get the, one of these really cool little funky replies coming back to say, hey, I'm on it, I'm working on it. And, uh, and then I would send that back to the WhatsApp uh, recipient uh, or the person who sent the message in, this was buying me some time to uh, let the rest of the flow run and get the result. And why was I doing this? And let me show you what I mean, actually, before I go further. Let's open my WhatsApp and I've got, here's my little bot. And you can see here, every time I sent a message in, I'd get this little great response, a fuck affirmative, you know, plotting my course of action, you know, copy that. This is a whole bunch of, 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 of preloaded kind of different funky responses that were coming in. And I was doing that to have a confirmation that, you know, message received, we're on it. But I'd actually don't need that. If we can do, if we can do this little animation, uh, typing animation, then I can get rid of this. Although I quite like it, I'm, I want to leave it, but there's going to be a use case where it makes more sense to use the little typing animations. So I've dropped that out here and I've dropped in an HTTP node here and an HTTP node here. They're actually identical nodes, and I'm gonna show you how to build them in a moment. And these are the nodes that are gonna give us the typing animation, that little, you know, I've got you, I know what's going on, give me a moment, and it's a little bouncing three dots. 
So let's go ahead and build that together. So I'm just going to uh, build this on the fly with you here. Let's see if I can do, do this. Uh, I'm just going to pull in an HTTP node because although we've got WhatsApp native nodes, trigger nodes, and action nodes in, in, um, in A10, what we're missing is this animation. So we've got to do this via an HTTP request. Uh, by the way, if you need to know more about HTTP requests, absolutely go jump into our uh, library here because somewhere hiding in here and every time here we go we've got a video n18 basics getting to know the http node so go check that out if you need a little more assistance there but we're going to grab this http request node i'm just going to put it on the canvas here let's just break it out of that i'm just going to pull this down here so it's out of the way so we can build this together so what's happening here we're going to have a chat coming in here it is it's coming in here's the chat we'll test it live right now this particular one is actually an, an audio chat which means for this to work i actually need to connect this guy up to the uh, voice side otherwise not going to get anything passing through so if i trigger that we come to the switch node here, which is checking to see, is it, a, is it a message or is it an audio? Let's just test that step here quickly. Okay, it's a voice and you can see now we've got an item coming down here into the HTT request node. So what we need to do now is configure this. So let's just call this uh, typing animation. We'll rename that. Okay, so now let's go and configure this. So let's head over to our docs. So first of all, what is the doc URL? Developers.facebook.com. And uh, there it is here. We'll put it in the description down below. Otherwise, just freeze the video and grab it here. Okay, so what are we? What's, what it's asking for here? Well, it actually gives us the curl. It actually gives us the curl that we could just import, but I'm actually just going to break this down a little bit here, and we're going to do this manually. So here's the endpoint we need to hit. And if I'm not mistaken, it's asking us to send a post request. Uh, does it actually say anywhere it's a post request? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty, pretty confident that this is going to be a post request. So I need to hit this endpoint here. So it's going to be that endpoint. I'm just copying that out. I'm going to go back over to my workflow here and i'm going to pop that in there i'm going to change this to a post request okay and let's change this into an expression because we need to do some things in here okay now we want to get the latest api version and i actually think if we go and have a look at one of our trigger nodes it tells us is it in here um or is it in the trigger node somewhere um was it in this node here? It tells us, ah, not quite sure. Where do we get the latest trigger? Where do we get the latest API from? Um, let's just have a look here. What have we got? Okay, here, here we've got an example request. V, v version 22.0. I'm actually just going to copy that right out. Copying that. Let's go back over to our workflow. If I can just navigate properly. Back into our workflow. Let's go grab our HTTP node. And let's just move that over to our version 22. Now we need the WhatsApp business phone number ID. Now you're going to get that from your meta developer platform. Again, I've mentioned the previous videos and how you go and get your credentials from and set up your credentials for WhatsApp via meta because meta owns WhatsApp also owns Facebook. So if I come back into here and I'm in my dashboard here, if this is confusing, if you haven't seen this before, go and watch the previous videos, but this is what I'm after. I'm after this phone number ID. That's what we're after. That's what the uh, documentation is asking us for. It's asking us for the WhatsApp business phone number ID. That is what we're looking for. So let's come back to our workflow and let's now pop that in here. Now I'm hard coding in this. Of course, you could do a dynamic variable, but my feeling is, you know, I'm going to be using the same number. So um, yeah, let's pop, let's pop that in there. But of course, you can make this a dynamic variable, have a set node before and just pull it in. And the endpoint here is messages. So that should actually be doing the job. Let's check forward slash messages. Fantastic. So we've got our endpoint set up. Now we need to get some credentials in here. So credential we need it looks like we've got to set it up. We'll need to just build this. But the good news is we already have our access token. Again, you'll be able to get your access token from 
your developer space here by following the steps in our videos here on how to create your WhatsApp credentials, which we cover to a, a briefer point here in this video as well. Um, and we've got a cover, couple of other WhatsApp videos too, hiding in here, WhatsApp AI chatbot, WhatsApp market researcher, all of these, go and check out those videos. They'll take, take that into more detail for you to how to get your access token. But you'll grab your access token from your developers.facebook uh, uh, dashboard, grab that token. And if we go back over to our documentation here, we need to put in a, a header of, uh, called authorization. And then, we, and, and then in the variable, we'll type in bearer space, and then we'll put our access token in. So I'm just going to show you that very quickly. So I've got that. So here we're going to go into authentication. You're going to choose generic credential type you're going to choose header auth all right i've got one preloaded but let's just create a new one now i won't complete it from scratch but we're just going to grab authorization now to make sure i don't make a spelling mistake i'm just going to copy this right here we'll pop back over here pop that in there and then in here let's just actually change this over to expression because then you can see We'll go bearer space and then what you're going to do is paste in the access token that you will have generated in your um, meta facebook developer account following the steps that we've explained in a previous video so i don't want to make this video too long so i'm not going to run through that so uh, once you've got that you can come in here paste that in here save it rename it and you will have your access token so i've done that already so i'm just going to not repeat that and that's exactly what i've done here and i've created a whatsapp credential so now we have our authentication taken care of so that's this section here authentication taken care of our content type is application json sure we need to worry about that let's have a look do we need to worry about that what application no i don't think we do we just need to set the sender body and we're going to be sending json and we're going to be sending it using json that just opens up a field here and if we come back to our documentation this is the json body we need to send so i'm just going to copy all of that and uh, we will come back into our n8n canvas pop that in there and there we have it there's our json and now we can see it's telling us right here, this is what we need to swap out. We need to swap out our WhatsApp message ID. Every message, every conversation that you had has a unique ID. It tells N8N what message to reply to, what thread to reply to. So let's go and just take this out. All right. And now we're going to come back here and we're going to look for our messaging ID. And there it is. There's our message ID. We can just drag and drop that right in there. And uh, often it does that to me, it drops it at the end of the JSON. So I'm just gonna cut that out there and go back and stick it in the right place. And now we have our message ID. Now, let me just double check. I wanna see, there is our typing animation. Let me just check one of the pre-built ones. I wanna double check whether I've had to deal with, um, not, looks like I do not need to worry about, well, we'll see if it works. I do not need to worry about um, this line that's here in here, this content type application JSON. It should know that straight away. We will test and go and see if that works. So we've built it. Guys, that was it. It's as simple as that. I'm gonna do a little test here. I'm just gonna, this we built was testing. I don't wanna confuse things. So I'm just gonna take that out and we're gonna go back into here. And just to show you that these are identical. Post, there's my number, there's my credential, JSON, JSON message ID, I'm mapping it in from the previous node. And then here, I've got a second one just because I've got two branches on here and you'll see it's exactly the same as the one before. So this is all, let's save this, this is live, it's activated. Let's go over to my WhatsApp now, send a message to this workflow. We're gonna just ask for a weather forecast and we'll see if we can pick up that typing animation. It might be really quick because it's quite a fast workflow, but let's check it out. Okay, so here you can see my screen. Uh, down here at the bottom, it's uh, a little small, but I'm sure you can check it out. So let's go. All right, so I'm actually heading off to a beautiful little village called Azerfontaine today. I did some testing earlier. So I'm just going to pop this out. I'm in uh, 
Cape Town, South Africa, beautiful part of the world, and this little Azofontaine village up the west coast is stunning, and I want to know what the weather's going to be like today. So I'm going to pop that in here, and let's hit go, and I should see a typing emoji. Let's see. All right, it's got the message, and look, there it is. You can see it running. There's our typing emoji. It's buying us time while the workflow runs. Brilliant. It absolutely worked. Today's weather in Azofontaine is looking lovely. The maximum temperature is 19 degrees Celsius. The minimum is also 19. I question that. I think it's warmer already. It's clear with beautiful sky is fantastic we're going to be leaving shortly it looks like it is working brilliantly so this will work for voice as well i won't test that because i know it's going to work and um it's exactly the same node and i don't want this video to drag on longer than it needs to be so guys there it is that is the workflow right there um i will go and uh, upgrade uh, we'll do a second version of this workflow that includes these typing animations in the community. You can go and grip this workflow here. But as you can see, super straightforward. You can do this yourselves. It's really, really easy. Follow the steps and you will have a typing animation just to add that little extra touch to your WhatsApp workflows, make them a little bit more human, make them a little more realistic that people are used to. I hope that helps. Big thanks to Chris over in our community for sharing that with us. We'll see you next time. Good day, good morning, good night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for sharing time with us.